All right, so I'm working on a 2004 Chevy Trailblazer with a 4.2 and a 4L 60E trans. Now this particular one, we had to tow it in because the pump pushing had spun out and this thing was leaking out of the front. And I believe as a result of that, it burned out the 3-4 clutch. But a pretty common issue uh, that these 4L 60Es have is the 3-4 clutch burning out. So it would make a 1-2 shift, and then when it goes for third, it'll either slip real bad, or it'll just run away like the car's in neutral. All right, and then you take the unit apart, and you got a burn set of clutches. I'll give you a close-up shot of these. They're actually out of this. This thing got pretty hot, and the snap ring really has no effect anymore, so I changed the snap ring. And of course, I like to change the load release springs. <coughs> Now they say that there's issues with the molded pistons in there and, and even when it's not leaking out of the front, these are a common problem. The last, I don't know, I just did one, I think it's that probably the last three or four that I did, they all had the clutches burned out. Um, <clears throat> so it's a pretty common problem. And they say that one of the issues of why the clutches burn out is the piston all the way down at the bottom of the drum, the molded piston, and I had run across some issues with the drum as to why these clutches burn out. Number one, um, one time I had, uh, just looking at the drum, I had grabbed and tried to move the shaft up and down, and actually the shaft was loose in there. It actually did move a little bit up and down, so you're going to lose pressure that way. And also, I do believe that these drums possibly crack internally. I had a I think in 04 that I did a while back, uh, came in with the typical 3-4 clutches burnout. You know, it's really nothing new. So we did the overhaul, and then the car was back in honestly about 500 miles with the same problem. So we know that there's something going on. So I started to look into, uh, the piston is new and everything was new. So I started to look into possibly an issue with the drum. Uh, and I believe it ended up being that I came to the conclusion that the drum was probably cracked internally because the shaft was not loose. I probably ran it by my tech service, I don't really remember, but I ended up changing the input drum and it fixed the problem. So whenever I, I get these transmissions in, you know, typically like 04, 05 is, is um, where I see, where I've seen issues with the drums, I tend to change the drum. But this particular one, I believe it burned out again because of the leak out of the front. But I'm going to show you a way, I'm going to show you how I check the drum to confirm that it is holding pressure uh, on the 3-4 clutch and it's not leaking. So there's the 3-4 the apply hole. I'm going to get a little closer here. There's a bleed hole here. So basically what I do is I block the bleed hole, I block the apply hole, and then I blow air into where the check wall is. And it holds, it has to hold the pressure until I release either the bleed hole or the apply hole. And then the pressure will escape. But if it escapes while I'm holding it, then the drum definitely is no good. All right, so I'm actually gonna get a little closer. Uh, I'll give you a close up shot of, of um, the two holes that I block and the check wall and capsule that I'm going to blow. You need like a rubber tip to do that. Uh, and then we'll do that and you'll see that it holds the pressure. So I just want to give you guys a, a little rebuild a tip that I do on all the 4L60Es just to confirm that I can reuse the drum if it comes in with the 3-4 frictions burned out. So let me get a little closer here. I might even uh, bring the camera up and get it right on top of the drum so you can see what I'm doing. I'll show you the, um, uh, the clutches and the, the load release springs that come in here. Um, they, I always change those. Sonics has uh, a kit, a pack of 10, because uh, the clutches can, can apply with, through centrifugal force uh, if they say the engine is revving high. So that's the reason why they put those load release springs in. So those I leave in there. And I usually always change those as well. Uh, I get, like I said, instead of getting the, the the load release spring itself with the 
uh, the little holder that holds the two springs, that things I pay, and I get parts at a wholesale, I think five or six dollars for that, and there's five of them in there. So now Sonics came out with a kit, they just take the spring out and put the new spring in. I'm not really sure how much that is, but it's nowhere near what it would be to change those load release springs, the whole, the whole part. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer. I'll uh, get right on top here, and I'm going to air check this and show you how I do it. All right, so just give me one moment. All right, quick shot of the frictions and steels. I mean, there's not much left of them. This thing uh, had totally no third at all. Again, the snap ring got so heated up, it kind of closed up, so it really was not doing much. And here's some of these load release springs. These things got very hot, and they kind of collapsed also. So I have... Uh, New clutches, steels, load release springs, snap ring. The pressure plates, I was able to clean up. They, I did check the flatness of them and they were okay. So I was able to use those over again. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little closer. And I don't know, you probably can't see it, uh, but I'm gonna block the two holes and blow into the capsule here. Let me just get a little closer onto the drum so you can see me air check it. Okay, so here is the bleed hole you have to cover. Okay, the apply hole for the 3 4 clutch is here. And you have to cover that. So you got to cover those two holes. You know, I just kind of put one finger here and then the other one across and just kind of keep the holes covered like that. And then here is the check ball, if you can see that. This is what you blow air into uh, with the rubber tip. All right, so you gotta block those two holes. You blow air in here, release the air, and the pressure should hold until you release one of the holes and then the air should escape. All right, so I'm gonna back up a little, just a little bit, uh, and I will air check this, and you'll see that it holds the pressure till, till I release my finger. Let me just back it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to block the two holes here. All right. Okay, so if you heard that, So this drum seems to be holding the pressure, so this drum looks okay, and I'm going to put this back. So I just wanted to share that, uh, I guess, rebuild quick tip with you guys to know if you can use this drum over again. And again, it's with the drums that have, you know, the splines in. And the earlier drums, you know, of course, have the splines in and it has the little shiny tip, but this would take like a, a TMBX converter, or uh, this particular one is a 4.2, I think it's a VJCX converter. Uh, but those are the ones where I have seen problems with the drum. Remember, either this shaft could be loose, I've seen that, or somewhere internally the drum cracks, causing it to lose pressure. So I just want to share that little rebuild tip with you guys uh, on the way to check this input drum on these 4L60Es. All right, thanks for watching, have a great day, and we will see you next one.